Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on a brake rotor. Um, so this tutorial is meant for Baja SAE, but it's not specific to that. It can really apply to any vehicle with brakes on it. Um, and in this tutorial, we're going to first start out with defining our loading conditions, uh, and then we're going to jump into Inspire and do the analysis and optimization. So. To start, we first need to derive the loads we're going to apply to our brake rotor. And to do this, there's many different ways to do this. Um, you can use accelerometer data on your vehicle, or you can use uh, the pressures from your brake pads. Uh, but here, we're going to take a very simple, elegant first principles approach. I'll get us an answer that's actually fairly accurate. So this is going to work by doing a moment balance. So if we look at the top here, we're just going to say the moment caused by the wheel is going to be equal to the moment uh, from our rotor. And if you break that into R cross F or you know, just subbing your diameter instead of your radius, uh, you can figure out what the force on your rotor is going to be uh, as a function of the two diameters and the force from the wheel. So uh, we can exploit the fact that in Baja SAE that our wheels need to lock up. And when our wheels lock up, we have sliding friction. So using that, we can just use a coefficient of friction uh, that's sliding times the normal force on that wheel. And here, we're just going to make an assumption the normal force is one-fourth the weight of our Baja vehicle with the driver. Uh, that's not perfectly correct with you know the load transitioning to the front of the vehicle, so the front of the vehicle is going to see higher loading in a dynamic situation. Um, but here, we're just going to take this approximation. And finally, we can get that the force uh, as a function of our diameters, our coefficient of friction, and the weight. And then when we substitute these uh, realistic values in, we get a uh, force on our rotor, as displayed here, as uh, 4.7 kilonewtons. So now how we're going to load this part in FEA, we're going to constrain the bolt holes that uh, holds the rotor to our upright or knuckle. And then we're going to apply the forces where our brake pad is going to be. And the interesting thing we're going to do here is we're actually going to do it twice. And the reason why we're going to do that is we're going to have uh, one brake pad location be like right in line with one of our bolt holes, and we're going to do another one that's in between two bolt holes. So that's to cover uh, most of the scenarios that our brake uh, pad can be. Because since this is a rotating part, our brake pad can be really anywhere along the circle. So we want to encompass uh, as much as we can without, you know, doing this 300 times. Um, you might be thinking that this loading situation is backwards, depending on how you look at it, uh, which uh, you know is, is also true. You can instead apply a moment at these holes and then uh, constrain it here. But you know it's equal and opposite, so it really doesn't matter. And this way is uh, simpler for us to do in Inspire. So speaking of Inspire, uh, let's jump into Inspire and do the analysis and optimization. So before we get started in Inspire, i first like to show my model and property editor. Um, it just provides more information, which is always helpful. So to start, uh, let's first import our CAD. There we go, easy enough. And you can see in this CAD that I actually have it, uh, I have these lines etched into our solid. Uh, so you can see a ring right here along with uh, locations of our brake pad, one here and then one over here. And the reasons I have this is to kind of help us uh, apply the forces correctly on the brake pads along with helping us segment the solid into a design space and a non-design space, which we need for optimization. Um, so to start, we're actually going to do something interesting and that is we're going to mid-surface this solid. So because this um, this brake rotor is very thin relative to the other dimensions, uh, I think this one's actually an eighth inch thick, 
Um, that allows us to degenerate the solid into a 2D shell. Um, and I'll go into more detail about this later, but the benefits this provides is uh, our element count is a lot lower, which allows for analysis to run quicker and our optimization to run quicker also with minimal to no loss in detail. So we're going to hit extract there. Cool, so now you can see this is a 2D shell. And what's interesting is now that instead of the geometry handling the thickness, we're going to actually have to assign a property for the thickness of this uh, 2D shell, uh, which we're going to get into more later. So next, we need to partition our uh, shell right here. Uh, we're not going to hit partition all right now because it's highlighting everything here. We're going to hit the back arrow. First, we're just going to do around our bolt holes because we don't want it to optimize our bolt holes. We want to keep that the same as how it looks right now. So let's hit partition all. I'm going to bump that up to five millimeters. There we go. And cool. So that's good. We also want to partition this outer ring from this inner area. The reason for that is we need our brake pads to contact this outer ring. So we don't want to eat away at any material in our optimization or else our brake pads have nowhere to contact. So to do that, let's hit partition again, the back arrow. And let's select this inner surface, hit partition, and make sure that's zero millimeters. We don't want it to add any thickness to it. So that's good. Sweet. So now we have this outer surface, we have this inner surface, and we have it around the bolt holes here. So now that we can look in our model browser, uh, let's highlight all of them and let's assign a material. Uh, in this example, we're going to use 4130. It's a pretty standard steel, um, but feel free to use whatever material you're using. Going to pick that. Cool. And now we want to apply a uh, design space to this inner surface. Cool. So by applying this as the design space, we're telling the computer this is the area we want to eat away material. Sweet. So now we can move into structure and we can do our connectors. So our connectors will help uh, us uh, distribute the force across our brake pad area. Um, Additionally, it helps make this area rigid, which is accurate because when your brake pads clamp onto your brake rudder, it kind of acts as like one object that's rigid in that area. So we can click there and then click again and make sure this says rigid. Cool. And we're also going to do that here. Sweet. Uh, so now let's check contacts. We shouldn't have any contacts, so it's always good to check contacts to make sure that they're correct. And now for our supports. So we're going to support the four bolt holes in the center that connects to our knuckle or upright. So one, two, three, four. Cool. And now to apply our forces, apply one here in the Z direction. And from our slides, we're going to use 4,700 newtons. Cool. Along with, we're also going to do that here. Um, and then instead, we're going to do direction. Yep, this is correct. Okay. So we're going to assign a direction here because we don't want it just horizontal. We want it, you know, radially or tangentially. Uh, so that is going to be... Let's do negative 0.5 here, negative 0.5 there, there we go, and that looks correct, yep. Sweet. So that all looks good. Um, and now from here we can actually create our load cases with this little guy right here. Um, it's very visual and nice to kind of create our different load cases. So we actually want to split these two forces into two separate load cases because they're not happening at at the same time, they're two different scenarios. So we're going to have two different load cases. So for load case two, we're going to have the same supports, and then we're just going to have force two, and then here we're going to remove force two. There we go, sweet. And you can see here that it changed it in this location also. 
So believe it or not, we're actually almost done. So we already assigned our material. And we can start with our analysis. So we're going to hit go here. It's going to figure out our element size. Let's hit run. So you might come across this area here where it says part with zero thickness. Uh, so that goes back to what I was talking about, that now that we had to sign the thickness in the property because we're using uh, shell elements, and before if we were using 3D elements, that becomes inherent in the geometry. So here it seems like we have some parts with zero thicknesses. That's all right. So we're going to note that. Come back up here. And if we look at the property editor, uh, for these partitions, it has a correct thickness of 3.175 millimeters. But it seems like here and here, uh, it actually has zero. So let's fix that. Let's change that value to 3.175. Cool. So these should all be 3.175. Cool. So let's rerun that. And we should get a answer pretty quickly here. Uh, again, it's because we're using shell elements. It's a simplified model, so the number of elements goes down, which makes our runtime go up. And yeah. And good news for us, I actually already ran all these. Um, so this is the result from our uh, analysis. And first thing to check is our displacements to see if this looks correct which uh, this is for our angled force down here. And you can change that to straight. Uh, so the main thing I would want to check here is to make sure there's no off-axis loading, which there isn't. You would see a lot of bending if there was, um, and that would be inaccurate. Cool. And then here we can also just check our stresses real quick. Um, so yield is around 430 MPa. So you can see that most of this is well under yield, which is good news because that means we can, uh, we have a lot of area to optimize. And you can see here the high stresses are actually near our bolt holes, which is uh, around what we expect and not the areas we're optimizing. So that all looks good to me. And you can see it's actually finished here. So pretty quick, uh, same thing. So now to do our optimization, we can just hit go here. I'm doing a topology a max stiffness. Um, it's up to you. You can experiment with different percent volumes that you want to keep. So the lower this value, the, uh, the less um, material it's going to have around here. And the higher, obviously, the, the more material it's going to keep. Uh, let's, for this, let's do 25. And we can keep this all the same. I'm going to reduce this a little bit to get some finer ribs in our model. But uh, it will take long, slightly longer to run. But we can afford that because we're using uh, 2D elements or shell elements. Let's hit run there. Um, it shouldn't take too long, but I already have the results here. So these results look a little, a little funky, right? Oh, whoops, my bad. Uh, yeah, so we can slide this up and down, but it's asymmetric, which is which is odd, right? Because our brake pad can contact this anywhere around the circle, so it might be strong here with this structure and strong here with this structure. But what if we're clamping right here? It's pretty weak, and it might break, right? Plus, it would be strange to have an asymmetric brake rotor, right? Um, and the reason why this happened is because we're not doing any symmetry. We're not copying this pattern around or forcing the optimization to do a symmetric pattern. But we can solve that uh, with shape controls. So if we go back here, you can see our optimization actually already finished. Uh, click that, and we get a pretty similar shape here. So to solve this, let's go back. Really simple, we can pick the symmet uh, symmetric control here. And you can choose either cyclic or cyclic symmetric. Um, either will work. I prefer cyclic symmetric because that way you can put your brake rotor in any direction in your vehicle and it'll work fine. 
if you pick just cyclic, then it might have like a strong direction, a weak direction. And if someone puts it in wrong, then that might be kind of catastrophic. So this is, this is the safer option. Um, so let's pick our design space here. Cool. And automatically pick three. Uh, I'm going to do four for this example. Um, you can experiment. You can bump this up to eight or, or 12. Up to you. You can just, you know, I'll run all three and see which looks best. But for now, I'm just going to do four. And hit optimize on that. Use this down to the two again. And hit run. And then going back here. Uh, this is actually how it looks. Um, so you can see that with the symmetric, it makes a lot more sense with the loading. And you can see it creating just bunch of triangles which you know also makes sense for you know the strongest shape um, and we can play around with the slider here and a good feature of inspire is we can actually just hit reanalyze and it'll take our optimized shape and analyze that and make sure that it meets our um, strength criteria so while that's working I can show you that I actually ran it with both four and eight uh, symmetry planes, uh, cyclic symmetry. And you can see the results are actually pretty similar. It's just that these uh, rib patterns change slightly. Um, but yeah, it's creating triangles nonetheless. So our analysis finished here. And we can see that if we set this to 403, that really, uh, oops, let's delete that. Uh, that our ribs are under the loads that we're, or under the, um, stresses, uh, for yield. And really the highest stresses are around our bolt holes, which I'm not too concerned about since there's a lot of contacting surfaces, uh, that we're not taking into account that will reduce that. Uh, we can also look at the other angled load, which, uh, you can see it's distributed across two bolt holes instead of one. Cool. So that about wraps it up. Um, I hope you learned something and uh, have a nice day.